Hi everyone and welcome. In the previous video, we have covered ESP32 as an MQTT broker and we have used Pico MQTT library to convert our ESP32 into the MQTT broker. So instead of Hive MQ MQTT broker, Mosquito MQTT broker or Nano MQ MQTT broker or any other cloud MQTT broker, you can use your ESP32 board as an MQTT broker for your small scale application. But in that video, uh, in that code, we have used port 1883, which is the default port for MQTT broker. Okay, but for some security reason, if you don't want to keep the default port 1883 for TCP communication or MQTT broker, then how you can change it in the Pico MQTT library. So that thing we are going to cover in this video. So basically, we will see how to set up basic MQTT broker with the custom port, okay, custom TCP port in ESP32 using Pico MQTT library. So again, we are going to set up MQTT broker in the ESP32 board. But instead of the port 1883, which is the default, we are going to select some other TCP port for MQTT communication. Okay, so let's see how you can do that. And here is the communication diagrams. So our ESP32 board is in the center, which act as a MQTT broker for all of the client and all of the client can publish to any topic okay and all of the client can subscribe to any topic and they can exchange the data and everything will happen in the local area network communication okay so your esp32 will connect with the wi-fi your esp32 c3 or python mqtt client also will connect with the wi-fi and they can publish and subscribe the messages so instead of port 1883 we want to start our mqtt broker with some different ports so let's see how you can do that so here is the arduino ide Okay, I have already installed Pico MQTT library in my Arduino IDE. You can see Pico MQTT is already installed. Now we will go to the examples and here we will search for the Pico MQTT folder. Okay, here you can see Pico MQTT and here you can see the example server with custom port. So we are going to select this example. When you load this example into the ESP32 board, your ESP32 board will act as a MQTT broker but it will run your MQTT broker on custom MQTT port. Okay, here you can see. So whatever TCP port you define here, your MQTT broker will run on that TCP port. Okay, so first of all, you have to provide your Wi-Fi SSID here. So my Wi-Fi SSID is, and uh, here we have to provide the password for your Wi-Fi. And then after on Whatever TCP port you want to start your MQTT broker, you can specify that in this line. So instead of port 1883, if you want to start your MQTT broker on the port 9000, then you can specify the port 9000 here. So uh, your client has to use the port 9000 to connect with your ESP32 MQTT broker. They cannot use port 1883 to connect with this MQTT broker. Okay. And rest of the code is same as the previous video. So it will connect with the Wi-Fi. Okay. And then it will continuously run our broker. So I'm going to upload this sketch into our ESP32 board. Okay. So I'm going to hit the upload button. Okay, here you can see done uploading. Now we can open serial monitor to find the IP address of our ESP32 board. So I'm going to press reset button on my ESP32. And here you can see connecting to Wi-Fi. And here we have the IP address of our ESP32 board. Now, in the previous video also, we have the same IP address of our ESP32, but the port number was 1883. Now we have a different port number for MQTT communication. So let's open the MQTT client and let's connect with our ESP32 MQTT broker. So I'm going to open MQTT Explorer here. And here you can see in the previous video, we have used port 1883 to connect with our ESP32 broker. But if I try to connect, then it won't able to connect because the MQTT broker is running on port 9000. So I have to abort it and then I have to change the port number to 9000 and then I can connect it. Okay, here you can see we are connected. So if I use port 1883, then it won't let us connect okay it will always uh, stay in the connection mode okay it will try to connect but 
MQTT broker or ESP32 won't respond to that connection request because of different port. So we have to change the port number to 9000. We have to abort it and then we have to connect again. And here you can see we are connected. I can again open one more MQTT Explorer client. Okay. And uh, I can change the port number to 9000. And I can click on connect to connect with our ESP32 MQTT broker on the different TCP port. Now the different TCP port is sometimes required due to firewall issues or some security reasons. Okay. So if we keep the port 1883 as a default, then anyone can uh, get access to our ESP32 MQTT broker. And if we change the port, okay, instead of 9000 or 1883, if we change the port to something else, okay, as per our requirement and as per our firewall rules, then no one can connect with that ESP32 MQTT broker. So that's why custom T TCP port is required. Now I can uh, publish some data to the test topic. Okay, the data is one, two, three. And here we are going to receive the data. And also I can publish the data from here, four, five, six, and that I'm going to receive it here. Okay, so our MQTT broker running inside the ESP32 is working fine. Our two different client can exchange the data with each other. So this client is also publishing and subscribing to the test topic and this client also is publishing and subscribing to the same topic. So this is how you can use your ESP32 as an MQTT broker with a custom port. Okay, or you can say custom TCP port for your MQTT broker communication. So I hope this thing is clear that how to set up basic MQTT broker with custom TCP port in ESP32 using Pico MQTT library. If you still have any questions or any doubt, then you can always ping me on Telegram, Instagram, WhatsApp, anywhere. All the social media link is available here on our website. So let's meet in the future videos and in the next video we will see how to set up secure MQTT broker in the ESP32 using Pico MQTT library. So right now, whenever you try to connect with your ESP32 broker, it won't ask for any username and password. Okay, you can see username and password field is empty. So if you want to set up the username and password, okay, if you want to make your ESP32 broker secure, then how we can do that? So that thing we are going to cover in the next video. Okay, so stay tuned for the next video. Till then, take care, goodbye and thank you.